and they are used in the treatment of gastroesophageal reflux disease as i have mentioned here that this drug is available in a market by different name like here so renitidine is the representative what h2 receptor antagonist with this drug they are severe alternative so renitidine it is available in a market by a trade name zente as well as it is available uh, 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 by uh, different names like nelson so this is why it is called h2 receptor antagonist because these drugs are responsible to block to mimic the activity of h2 receptor histaminic receptor histamine receptor which is present in your stomach so histamine h2 receptor they, they they are distributed throughout your body especially in your smooth muscle so there are different type of drugs which are available in a market tablet renitidine hydrochloride 150 mg oral solution renitidine hydrochloride 75 mg per 5 ml so it mean we are going to dissolve 75 mg at 5 ml then you can increase the dose according to the condition of the patient so you can adjust it after that the oral solution renitidine 75 now if they are also available in injectable form injection solution for injection renitidine is hydrochloride 25 mg for ml to ml ampule as we can differentiate between while and ampule that some of their contain multiple drug and some of them can't uh, powders are water for injection the clinical use is the clinical use is the indication of renitidine that is used in the treatment of benign gastric and duodenal ulceration gastroesophageal reflux disease zollinger elicel syndrome as well as we can say as the other condition that the gastric acid reduction is very important as we have mentioned before how you can identify the drug how you can identify the drug that the drug is lipophilic in nature or the drug is hydrophilic in nature. So those drugs which are lipophilic in nature, so it will easily cross the blood brain barrier as compared to the hydrophilic which are water soluble, so it doesn't cross the blood brain barrier. So the water, the drug must be water soluble and it can be easily excreted from the, your body. It means those drugs which are lipophilic in nature, so it will be easily cross uh, the blood brain barrier, but it must be water soluble that can be able to uh, excrete from your body. Now here, the contraindication, now related in this is contraindication and porphyria. Porphyria. This is a genetic disease and which there is occur the abnormal metabolism of blood hemoglobin. So, for example, as we have mentioned, when there is blood loss like hemorrhage, in case of hemorrhage, yeah, in case of appendicitis. So, this drug can be used with precaution. I mean, this is contraindication. You should take, you should use this drug with proper precautions. So here I have mentioned that this drug uh, can be used with precaution like hepatic impairment, renal impairment and pregnancy and as well as breastfeeding, uh, the middle age or older patients, those whose symptom changes name of the gastric uh, cancer. So there may be a chances of um, uh, certain like uh, gastric ulcer, duodenal ulcer and peptic ulcer. Now what are the different doses which are available? This drug is available in a market by different names. Here it is mentioned that the dose and benign gastric and duodenal ulceration by mouth added 150 mg twice daily or 300 mg at night for 4 to 8 weeks up to 6 weeks and the chronic episodic uh, dyspepsia. I mean that those drugs which are used in the treatment of gastroesophageal reflux disorder or gastric disorder so it depends upon on the condition of the patient either the condition of the patient is mild moderate or severe so here it is mentioned that in benign gastric duodenal the L150 mg BD twice daily or 300 mg at night <coughs> for 4 to 8 weeks mean it should be continued for 4 to um, uh, 8 weeks the only drug which is more safe except that is PPI proton pump inhibitor proton like uh, isomeprazole omeprazole so these drugs they are responsible to reduce the acid secretion uh, the gastric secretion up to our stomach yes, so sir. these drug proton pump inhibitor proton pump inhibitor as we know that proton carry positive charge and hydrogen also carrying positive charge so proton pump inhibitor are those drugs which can block which can
block the acid secretion which can block their proton pump which contain hydrogen ion so it will reduce the hydrogen ion concentration as we know that our stomach contain HCl hydrochloric acid and that hydrochloric acid present in concentrated form so now if you are using PPI in different type of drug so the basic the uh, mechanism the mode of action of proton pump uh, inhibitor that it can block that proton pump which is responsible to increase the hydrogen ion concentration so our target is to reduce the hydrogen ion concentration which is present which is produced by these acid which is present in your stomach which is uh, so we will block the gastric acid secretion our main target is then that we should block why that is called proton pump inhibitor because proton having positive charge hydrogen having positive charge it means the acidity in your stomach they are going to become elevated so in order to minimize in order to mimic the chances are to reduce the acid acid secretion these ppi proton pump inhibitor are used so this is the basic mechanism through which we can stop this is the mechanism of action or mode of action through which the drug drug it can reach to its target site and to show some pharmacological activity so here as there are different doses four to eight weeks this is the only drug which is more safe and so because <coughs> capsule capsule they are disintegrate and basic medium and capsule they are always used before meal so especially those patients who have a problem of like stomach upset so you can easily it can be recommended by so they are available in a market by different name at the dose of 20 milligram or 40 milligram okay so uh, let's suppose here <coughs> Now in case of an up to 8 weeks and insert associated ulceration. Mm -hmm. Now this point should be clear. Non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug, those drugs which are used in the treatment of peptic ulcer, duodenal ulcer, or gastric ulcer. So insert they are avoided to that patient, they are contraindicated, but it cannot be used in such a people who have a stomach disorder. So insert should should be avoided. If if you are using insert. So instead of NSAID, if you can use other agent like, uh, uh, for example, uh, borine diclopenic sodium <laughs> plus mesoprestol. So it pump a protective layer around the stomach in order to mimic its activity. So here it is mentioned that NSAID associated ulceration because and said they can directly affect your stomach. They can increase the concentration of hydrogen ion in your stomach. So here, and duodenal ulcer 300 milligram can be given twice a day for four weeks to achieve the higher healing rate. And duodenal ulcer, and duodenal ulcer, it can be used at the dose of 300 milligram. It can be given two times for four weeks to achieve the higher healing rate. Mean for four weeks if it is used continuously for a week if it can be recommended. So there is no complication. So especially and duodenal ulcer, duodenal ulcer, they are present in your duodenum, which is the first part of this small intestine. So here, uh, the maintenance dose is 150 milligram at night at night and especially in children those who are su suffering from who are affected by the peptic ulcer two to four milligram per kg body weight so this is understandable so yes. this is clear yes. two milligram two to four milligram per kg body weight if a child whose weight is uh, 10 kg so uh, let's suppose so a 10 it means that 20 milligram or 40 milligram this is the normal recommended dose which is given to the patient so it is also clear that two to four milligram per kg twice a day twice a day means daily daily yes and maximum load this is 300 milligram daily od mean 24 hour if you are using a dose od mean 24 hour and 24 hour it mean at frequency is one mean uh in the entire 24 hour a single tablet head can be used or for example bd mean after 12 hour tds mean after tds mean after after eight hour yes so at frequency and time period it will complete as benign gastric and duodenal ulceration uh, reflux esophagitis, inflammation and the esophagus or zoolingal illison syndrome <laughs> by the intramuscular injection means these drugs are also available in tablet form and suspension form as well as they are available and injectable but it need a clean at loss level practice. 
and need practice makes a man perfect. Yeah. And you will have to do something if you want to become a competent nurse. If you want to become a competent, so you should know about the all the profile, the clinical pharmacology of each and every drug. So here, by intramuscular injection, the adult 50 milligram every six hours. Every six or mean after each six eight hour fifty milligram drug can be recommended by a slow intravenous injection. Okay, that is also called slow release. Mean and at predetermined time this drug will be released. So the time which is given for uh, fifty milligram every six to eight hours mean after six to eight hours you can you can inject. Uh, you, you can inject that specific drug or by slow intravenous injection 50 milligram diluted to 20 ml so you can dilute the 20 milligram drug because this is present and yeah, this is present and solid solid form this is liquid form so we can dilute 50 ml uh, 50 milligram mean the dose is 50 milligram so 50 milligram will be dissolved and what 50 milligram will be dissolved and 20 ml. So, for example, if the dose is 25 milligram, then it can be dissolved in 10 ml. Understand? Clear? So, it means that if the dose is 50 milligram, so it should be diluted. Diluted means to decrease its concentration. So, here, if the dose is 25 milligram, it should be diluted uh, dilute with 20 ml. So, and given over the last two minutes, may be repeated every six hours, mean if it can be divided. So, after each eight hours, so mean at this, so, so it can be, uh, it will complete the period of, uh, the uh, time period of uh, TDS three times a day. So, here, uh, uh, may be repeated every six hours or by intravenous infusion, 25 milligram per hours for two hours. And this is also another another thing that you can recommend it at 25 milligram per hour so it depend upon on the condition of the patient so then you can adjust the dose according to this formula because you know about the specific dose which is recommended by which is here which is recommended by or the dose which is prescribed by the medical practitioner so here it may be repeated every six to eight hours. Duodenal ulceration associated with H. pylori. So the only condition that this H. pylori helicobacter for and with double antibiotic are used. Otherwise, <coughs> double antibiotic they are contraindicated. It cannot be used. But there are certain microorganisms. This is the only exceptional case in which clarithromycin, clarisid, and amoxicillin is used in a combination with pentoprazole are omeprazole with flagellin combination so mean uh, this is the only case because there are some microorganisms which cannot survive which cannot uh, aerobes and aerobes faculty to an obligate so these microorganisms it cannot be kept by a single antibiotic so that's why we are compared and this is the exceptional case in which two antibiotic is used amoxicillin and as well as erythromycin so one is macrolide and the second one is silval synthesis and hepatitis so due to ulcerations uh, Prophylaxis of NSAID, duodenal ulcer by mouth, added 150 milligram twice daily, and I think you can study it. And thank you so much for watching uh, this.